Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. Gloucester Meteor was the first British jet fighter. It entered service during World War II, and although it was used in actual combat during that conflict, it never fought against its German counterpart, ME-262. The service which took it to the next war, the one in Korea, wasn't the Royal Air Force, but the Royal Australian Air Force. In June 1950, when North Korea started the war by invading South Korea, RAAF-77 Squadron was based in Japan as a part of the British Commonwealth Occupation Forces. They were flying P-51 Mustangs and they soon joined the UN operations against North Korea. They initially flew cover for B-29 bombers and they deployed to South Korea after some time. They continued to fly combat from there until April 1951 when they deployed back to Japan for conversion to jets. Besides military aviation, learning languages is another one of my passions. That's why this video is sponsored by Babbel, an app that teaches you to speak, read and listen in a new language. It provides lessons, games, podcasts, videos and live online classes with expert teachers. Why is Babbel the best choice for you? Among other things, it teaches real-world conversations and it offers several different subscriptions, including Lifetime, and all of it with a 20-day money-back guarantee. To get Babbel, click my link in the video description. It will give you 60% off. Start learning one of the 15 different languages today on your desktop or mobile device. Australian government wanted to purchase F-86 Sabres for their Air Force, but USAF needed all the Sabres it could get, and deliveries couldn't be made until 1954. The next option was to purchase the best jet fighter Britain could offer, Gloucester Meteor F-8. By that time, Meteor was quite outdated in comparison to F-86 Sabre, and even more importantly to MiG-15, the Soviet fighter it was supposed to confront. Meteor had some advantages over the MiG such as low-level maneuverability, but its straight wings limited its speed to around Mach 0.82. MiG-15 could handle well over Mach 0.9, and this gave communist pilots the luxury of choice how and when to fight, or whether to fight at all. The first mission in which RAAF's Meteor's space Soviet flown MiG-15s took place on 29 August 1951. Eighth Australian Meteors divided into two flights named Item and Dog, performed a fighter sweep in Chongju area in conjunction with 16 F-86 Sabres. The Meteors were flying at 35,000 feet. At 12.20, two flights of MiG-15s were spotted at 40,000 feet heading west. Then, the Australian pilots observed two more MiGs at 30,000 feet. The lead element from item flight dived to attack them. Item 2 lost control and spun in the dive. Item 1, squadron leader Wilson opened fire at one of the MiGs but he very soon felt hits on his own aircraft. It was a MiG-15 flown by senior Lieutenant Chukin. Wilson broke away in this damaged meteor. Item 3 and 4 dived on the attackers, but the mix dived away and escaped. Squadron leader Wilson managed to land back at Kimpo. At the same time, the dog flight came under attack by another group of mix. Warrant officer Ron Guthrie, who was flying as number 4, was startled by tracers streaming by his airplane.
he threw his meteor into a hard left turn and called brake to warn his flight, but his radio had already been damaged and nobody heard him. Two MiGs overtook Guthrie's plane and he quickly opened fire at them. He observed hits but enemy fighters dived away. Guthrie's meteor was now accelerating in a dive and shuddering from compressibility. As it continued to roll out of control, Guthrie pulled the ejection handle. He survived and became a POW until the end of war. The Soviet pilot who shot him down was probably senior Lieutenant Babonin. On 5th of September 1951, Australian meteors again met the mix. Eight meteors flew in two flights named Abel and Baker. Their task was escorting two RF-80 recon airplanes. Two of the meteors aborted the mission while the rest stayed with the RF-80s for about 18 minutes as they covered the Shonchon to Chongju railway line. At 5.35 pm, 12 MiG-15s were sighted at 26,000 feet, flying above the meteors. The MiGs were flying on a reciprocal course, and once they passed the meteors, they attacked them from 6 o'clock. The MiGs showed good combat discipline. As one pair made a pass, they would pull up and the next pair followed. The encounter lasted for about 5 to 6 minutes. Able 1 and 2 managed to fire a few bursts at the mix, but without results. Baker 4, flown by Warrant Officer Mickelson, was damaged by one of the MiGs flown by Captain Ohai of the 523rd Fighter Regiment. Mickelson's meteor went into a long dive out of control. As his tail assembly was damaged, the pilot was careful not to put too much strain on it, but he eventually regained control at 10,000 feet. One of the MiGs was supposedly seen trailing white smoke, but no claims were made by the Australian pilots. As Meteor continued to confront the MiGs, the first claim was made by Flight Lieutenant Dawson on 26 September. He claimed the damage in a MiG-15 while flying an escort mission near Anju, North Korea. A few more damage claims were made, one of them by flying officer Les Reading on 27 October. The meteors were escorting 8 B-29s in Sinanju area. After the bombing run, the formation was attacked by at least 10 MiG-15s. The mix damaged the B-29, but one of them passed in front of Reading, who was able to open fire at it. He achieved hits, and his wingman, along with the pilot of a B-29, reported seeing a burning MiG. 
reading was credited with a damaged MiG-15, but after Soviet archives became available for study in the 1990s, they showed that a MiG was lost on that day, which indicates reading could have achieved the kill. That would make it the first proper victory by Australian Meteor pilots. This was part one of our video about Royal Australian Air Force Meteors in the Korean War. Be sure to press the like button. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal because this is the only way for the channel to keep producing new content. Thank you and keep watching Showtime 112.